An ancient Bitcoin whale is moving its Bitcoin to Kraken. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Wherever you are, it's beautiful. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. In today's video, talking, of course, about the news as a huge whale from 2009 is moving its Bitcoins from their wallet into Kraken Exchange, guys. Also some other news. And yes, the Bitcoin charts, of course, checking how Bitcoin moved this weekend, where we are at the moment, where we are heading to, guys. And an inspirational quote at the end as normal, guys, on this amazing, beautiful Monday morning in Thailand. Sawadee Cup, everyone. That's how you say good morning here in Thailand, guys. Now, let's quickly jump into the news first. Bam. The first news, guys, is about a will. A will that mined Bitcoin in 2009. That's completely the beginning of Bitcoin. This whale was mining Bitcoin already. And in the last couple of weeks, he has slowly been moving Bitcoins into Kraken. Probably to sell them around the bull market top, but he has started to move all the mined Bitcoins from 2009 already onto Kraken. The last transaction that he did was like a couple of days ago. That was around 10 Bitcoins. It was around 600K worth of Bitcoin, guys. Yes, you noticed that fine. Uh, the 10 Bitcoins, 600K, moving to Kraken. In total, he now moved around $3.6 million worth of Bitcoin already. So $3.6 million worth of Bitcoin from a really ancient wallet, a wallet that started mining Bitcoin in 2009, has been moved to Kraken. So that's very interesting as those wallets normally don't move anything to any exchanges until they expect that they want to sell a little bit or take a little bit profit. So let's keep that wallet on track. Uh, I will put the link to that wallet, of course, down below the links, guys. Next to the links of, of course, all the favorite exchanges that I have. For example, Bybit, guys. Bybit has a bonus of 30,000 US dollar. And at the moment, the World Series of Trading is going on. So you can even sign up to become a member of my team. And collectively, then we can win up to $10 million worth of prizes. All cool stuff. So make sure you sign up to Bybit. Or if you want to do non-KYC, sure, sign up to Blowfin, guys. And if you want to completely trade decentralized, sign up to Apex Pro. All the links down below, guys. So that's the first news item. Big whales starting to move their Bitcoins from 2009 onto the exchange Kraken. Then the second news item for today is that the United Arab Emirates, UAE as well, they now got rid of the VIT on cryptocurrency transfers and transactions, guys. So you are not going to pay tax anymore on your cryptocurrency transfers, transactions, and everything else that you do with cryptocurrency in the UAE. So this is the next country saying, hey, we're not gonna tax your Bitcoins anymore when you transfer them or when you use them in a transaction. There is more and more countries doing this. And of course, all these other countries need to follow. Because if the biggest economies of the world are doing tax exemptions on all your conversions of all your transfers of cryptocurrencies, then other economies need to follow up as well. So yes, I think it's a very big step again for the UAE to now exempt Bitcoin from all these taxes. Beautiful there. In Thailand, it's almost the same rules now. I think more rules all over the world are now going to be in the same line. And seeing Bitcoin just as the goal of the 21st century and trying to get as much as possible Bitcoiners, Bitcoin companies, and all the kinds of Bitcoin business that they can have into their country, guys. More countries understand that Bitcoin is going to be a very important thing on the future economy. So more countries want to attract more people that understand Bitcoin, that work with Bitcoin, that transact Bitcoin, that uh, exchange Bitcoin, all that stuff. That is why they want to have all these businesses now in their countries. And how do you lure all these businesses into your countries? To have tax exemptions for all these countries. So I think it's a very big step for the UAE. I think it's going to lead again to becoming a very important Bitcoin hub again in the Arab Emirates. But let's see where it will take us, guys. I think Thailand is also going to be a very safe play, very crypto friendly, also tax friendly. I think Thailand will be maybe even the best choice as it's a little bit less materialistic than the UAE. Some people love the materialistic style for us, uh, for me and my family. Uh, yeah, we just we are just like more minimalist, so we don't really like the whole the materialistic style that the UAE has to offer for us. But still, I like that these countries are taking a step now to have tax exemptions for Bitcoin conversions and transactions, guys. Two beautiful news items. Let's now jump into the charts. What happened to Bitcoin in the last weekend? What I think that Bitcoin is going to do 
and all the rest that I want to talk to you about. Oh yeah, at the end of the video, I also have some really cool news about some new project that we as the Bitcoin family are supporting, starting, and even inviting you all to. But more about that later. This is the first chart for today, guys. Yes, as always, the four hour chart. Just because I love the view of the four hour chart doesn't mean it's the best chart. It's just a beautiful chart to see what is happening. You know, we had a beautiful buy signal over here. There it was. Then we need to wait for the candles to close above the yellow stepping line. It happened over there. The green, the blue and the yellow you can see turned into green. That happened over there. You can even see the green line on top, also good. And the blue line was above the white line. The white line was curling up a little bit. So that's a one, two, three, four times. It's a quadruple confirmation to take that long over there, uh, which of course would be in profit at the moment. Let's say we take it a little bit late at the moment, still 3.4%. You could have already taken profit over there at 4.3%, but still it's a four hour chart. So it's a slow chart. So we are not taking profits yet. We will take profits at a sell single or when a candle closes down below the stepping line. So you could have taken profit at the sell signal, just to give you why, an example why we sh didn't sell, because we waited for the candles to close down below the stepping line, it didn't happen, and we continued the move. So that's why I always say, you need to choose your own risk portfolio. If you wanna have profit, you sell there, you take your profits. If you wanna risk it a little bit, you wait till we close down below the yellow stepping line, you have less profits, or you can have more profits. That's how the indicator works. Uh, we can see that the red line now is turning up. So yes, there will be some downside moves in the future, but let's see, this candle is gonna close in a couple of hours, one hour or two hours. And then uh, this is of course the resistance 63. That's what we need to break. Also on the five day chart, that's the level we need to break. We even need to break 64K level. That's a top level here of this, of this uh, Gaussian channel. We need to break it to get out of the Gaussian channel and again, we'll become more bullish. So that these green bars on the bottom can become a little bit more bullish bars, a little bit bigger bars, just like they became bigger here when we had a 30K move, when they came bigger here, we had a 20K move, when they became bigger here, a 7K move, and when they came bigger here, a 37K, and here even a 55K move. If you ask me, this one over there, this move now is looking pretty much like this move, very slowly building up in these green bars, higher and higher and higher, and we will be taking profits in the future, but you know, just subscribe to this channel and I will tell you exactly when to exit the markets, etc. Now let's jump into three or four more amazing charts you need to see today, guys. Uh, the first one is this one. This one I found on, of course, Twitter. This is, let me see the Twitter name. Ah, the Twitter name is there on top, so you can see the Twitter name. I'm not gonna hide all that stuff because uh, all the shout outs and props to those people that uh, post these beautiful charts. Um, this chart is showing you uh, that the BBSR extreme, this one over there, there's an indicator on trading view. Mostly when we reach the top, that's when we have these, after we reach these bottoms in this green area here. This is when we reach the top of the market, top of the market, top of the market. Now we are still there, we are there. We still need to fall down with a BBSR extreme all the way to this bottom area, minus 50 somewhere there, to tell you that we the top of the bull market is in. So this area is similar to when we were here, this area, and we were here, this area, flat. We will fall down, and when we fall down, that's when the price is going up. Cool chart. Then we have this chart. This is the Bitcoin Puel multiple. Found this also on Twitter, but you can also find these charts on Glassnode and everything, guys. Um, here you can see that the Puel multiple is reaching levels of up to 10 in the previous bull markets. In the 2017 bull market, we went around nine, I think eight to nine. And here at the last bull market, at double top, we didn't even go in. We just reached the bottom area of this pink level. So that's a level of, I think, seven and higher. Now, at the moment, we are here. We are near that green box. The best buying opportunity is in this green box, it's a bear market bottom. In this green box, it's a bear market bottom. In this green box, it's a bear market bottom. I've been telling you to buy already all the bear market in this area. I told you we are in the green, we will go in the future to the pink. We went up now to this blue dot. What does that mean? Just look back to those previous cycles. Every time from the green, 
we went to a blue, we went to a purple, and then we went into that pinkish box. From the green, we went to the blue, we went to that purplish, then we went into that pinkish box. From the green, we went into the blue, we went back into that purplish, then we were trying to go into the pinkish box because it has a double top, distribution top, we didn't go in. Blow of top goes in. Distribution top didn't go in. And then again, green box, we went again into the blue, dumped again into that pinkish, purplish, whatever you call it. Now this move is expected. And it means the Bitcoin price move above 100K. Very cool chart. Now, then we have this chart. This chart is showing you a few models. Also found this one on Twitter. I think I need to uh, put my face somewhere here. Um, on this chart, guys, you can see uh, different models. You have the exponential growth models, you have the stock to flow growth model, and you have the power law growth model. Here you can see clearly what the difference is, and that's why I love this chart, and that's why I want to share it. Exponential growth model is telling us that the top um, should be somewhere around that green line on the top over there. And it should be in the end of 2025. If you see this correctly, it ends in the end of 2025. This is where 2026 starts. Now, that growth model, we are exactly in the point that we need to be somewhere over there. And now we will go up into this new bull market of 12 to 15 months, all the way up to the end of 2025. This exponential growth model is saying, this is the 100K target, that we will easily reach that. But this one is even saying, hey, we could easily reach even that 1 million target per Bitcoin. That's the exponential growth model. Now, then we have the stock to flow model, the plan B model. That's a model I really like. We are now here. The plan B model is saying, hey, an average, that red midline, an average you would reach 500K in between 2024 and 28. So between 2024 and 2028, the average price of Bitcoin should be 500,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. And that means we need to go above the 500K and come down below the 500K, and again go above that 500K to create an average of 500K. Some price movements above it, some price movements below it, and some price movements above it again. Now, also saying, hey, the top will be in the end of 2025. He's calling a top from between 500K and a million dollar per Bitcoin. That's a stock to flow model. Again, he is not predicting this, but that's what the stock to flow model tells us. If we end up at 300K, that's also beautiful. We still have like four years left to create an average of 500K. Now, then we have the power law. That's this one. That's a chart that a lot of people are talking about on Twitter now. On this chart, you can see, hey, the top, again, should be a green dot. And that green dot is at this level, a million dollar per Bitcoin. So also the power law is telling us, hey, end of 2025, we should be at a million dollar per Bitcoin. And the average will probably be around 120 to 130,000 US dollars per Bitcoin. And the next bear market, they are even saying, is above 100K. The next bear market in the stock to flow model is below 100K ish, around 65 to 70K. The next bear market here in this model should be above the 100K again. So all of the charts are uh, kind of telling us the same. The top should be between 500K and a million. So I'm very conservative when I tell you the top will be around 120 to 160,000 US dollars. But that's because I sell around the top and near the bottom I buy back. I don't want to have the perfect top or the perfect bottom because it's almost impossible to guess it. But just a few models to show you the difference between the exponential growth, stock to flow and the power law. They're all very bullish. All of them tell us we are now here and we are going to go massively up in the next couple of months. You should be buying now because you won't be able to buy back at these prices ever again. Then we have this chart. This is the last chart, guys. Uh, this is the Bitcoin price history. This also showing you exactly the same again. Check these red lines. These other lines are the halving moments. So we had the halving of 2012. We had the halving four years later of 2016. We had the halving four years later of 2020. And now we just had the halving of 2024. If you look back now to all those moments after the halving, after the halving of 2012, did we go up or down? We went massively up. What did we do after the halving of 2016? We went massively up. What did we do after the halving of 2020? We went massively up. What did we do after the halving now? 
we are going sideways, but there will be a move massively up. Because that sideways move was also always there, sideways, sideways, sideways. Every time there is a certain amount of sideways moves, 170 days on average, that we go massively up from that moment. You are still able to buy Bitcoin around the prices that will be lower than the prices that will be the bottom of the bear market in 2027. That's what I expect. That was the last chart. I hope you really enjoyed those charts, guys. Yes, short term, again, beautiful volatility, beautiful trading signals. In the 15 minute, there were a couple of trades, of course, on the weekend. But let's zoom out. Let's zoom out. Let's look at that bigger picture. We are exactly where we need to be. And it won't take very long anymore before we start to move up to the next level of resistance, which will probably be between 85 and 95K. That is where we want to head for. That is where Bitcoin needs to go now. Like you saw in all the previous bull markets, we did exactly that move. And we are expecting that move now again in October, November, December, going beautifully up into that new range, 85 to 95K. Maybe go sideways there a little bit, you know, from 80K to 90K, or 80K, 90K, but at least create this new pattern again, this new support zone to take off in 2025 above 100k and yes also stay above 100k for a very long time because believe me if we will do with bitcoin what everyone thinks bitcoin that will do and it will go to 160 even maybe to 200k if we go to 200k and we would crash again with like 70 percent like normally that would mean that we would crash back to the 60k level around the halving price the halving price was 63 in all the previous cycles, to be very clear, we have never crossed down below the halving price again. So we had a halving, we went into a bull market top, we always crashed 70 to 80%, but we never go, went lower than that previous halving price. So it could mean that 63 is the cheapest price that you will ever be able to buy Bitcoin. So we are at 62 now, so we're even buying cheaper than in the next bear market bottom. So that's just one thing that I want to share with you, because I believe that if we copy all the other cycles and we just do what Bitcoin always does, that these levels that you're buying now, between 60, 63K, could be the cheapest Bitcoin that you will be buying for a very, very long time. Now, that were the charts. Let's jump into the next part. I have been giving you a couple of hints last week. The first hint was BAM. The second hint was BAM. The third hint is Didi. <laughs> so now you have three hints, Didi, BAM, and BAM. Now, if you are good at Google or searching Twitter or searching uh, our VIP groups or the Telegram groups, you will find exactly what I'm referring to, guys. There is something new being built for VIPs, for the current VIPs, but also for the new VIPs. It will be a very interactive way, but also a very fun way of Bitcoin, blockchain and life education. It's also going to be done in a very futuristic way. And it will also, of course, be like a really cool Telegram mini app and way more, guys. But I can't say more today. That was all the hints that I was giving today. If you are good at Googling, and searching all the groups that I am in, then you will find something when you Google Didi, bam, bam. That's the hint for today. Tomorrow I will go full public and disclose exactly what we've been building and how you can sign up, how you can become part of something really, really cool. Yes, it's gonna be really cool. If you already see how enthusiastic the current VIPs are because they were able to onboard this weekend already, because of course they were already VIPs, so I need to give them access first, guys. That's just how it works. That is why they supported the Bitcoin family already for years by being VIPs, by buying our indicators, all of that stuff. But soon we are coming with something new that those VIPs already have seen. They really like it. And the new VIPs, I believe, will also really like it, guys. It's, it's going to be something really cool that's going to help with adoption, that's going to help with education, that's going to help with having fun, that's even going to help with meeting each other again on a very beautiful physical place somewhere in the future, guys. But more about that tomorrow. That were all the hints for today. Let's now jump into the last part of the video. The last part of the video, guys, like always the inspirational part. And of course, I already used this one 
sometimes last year and sometimes I will do double inspirational parts because that's just, that's just a certain amount of inspirational quotes. But I think that this one is very important for a lot of people during this part of the bull market cycle, during this part of their life because most of my followers are between 25 and 45 years old. So yeah, that's the age that you start to think, what do I want from my life? What do I want to do more? How can I continue the life in a better way, etc., etc., etc. So the quote for today is, I rather regret the things that I did than I need to regret the things that I didn't do. It's a very powerful quote. I prefer to regret all those things that I did instead of regretting that I didn't do them. Just understand it, let it sink in. Whatever it is that you want to do in life, how crazy it might sound to you, to your family, to your wife, to everyone else. If you don't do it now, you will in the end regret that you never did it. And then you will always have that feeling, ah, I should have, I could have. Maybe if it was like that, I would have. That is all the wrong feelings that you want to have at the end part of your life. At the end part of the life, you should be looking back into your life and like, my God, yeah, that was not the best choice, but I did it. I did it. I tried it. And do I regret it? Nah, probably not. Probably you will never regret what you did do. I think that's even the best thing that you can do. But it's very important to understand that's probably better for you to, do, to regret the things that you did do instead of regretting that you didn't do them. So you should be doing all the things that are now floating in your mind. Ah, maybe I could. Is it achievable? Can I do it? Can I change my life? Can I change my job? Can I just take my kids in another path of education? Can I take them out of the school? Whatever it is, you will regret not doing it and that's not the right choice. You should be regretting that you did do it. That's way more powerful in the end, guys, because at least then your life was a bit of an adventure. Your life was not that stupid hamster wheel running life that most people are forced into because of their governments. Because the governments make everything more and more and more expensive and they keep printing more and more money, that's a very powerful combination to keep you poor. And as long as you are poor, you won't be following or hunting your dreams as you need to be working 24-7. And when they realize, ah, you know, only the husband is working, ah, we should have them both working, also the wife, that's when they invented the emancipation for the women. That's when they started to tell the women, hey, you should be working as well. Why? Because then the husband is working, the wife is working, they are collecting the double amount of taxes, of course, because now both of those people need to pay taxes, and those people don't have the time anymore to educate uh, and to grow up their children, so they need to send the children into our schools. So we will brainwash the children into becoming those robots for the Dutch economy or the United States economy. economy. That's how it worked. And it happened like that. And now it becomes time that you see this, that they see, that, they, that you see that it was all a bigger plan. And how do you now prepare your kids for this new future? For this new future, because you are buying Bitcoins. Most of you already bought a shitload of Bitcoins. Most of you are creating generational wealth. Now you need to teach your children how to use that generational wealth in the future. Please don't let those kids be educated by those fools that want to keep your kids poor educate them yourself and how can you do this just by living life to the fullest in a completely disconnected way from the hamster wheel and how do you do this by doing now what you want so you won't regret that you didn't do it in the future that's how powerful it is so the quote for the day again is it's better to regret all the things that you're doing now instead of regretting that you didn't do them that's very important, guys. That's how you grab life by the balls. That's how you grab life by the balls. That's how you make those power moves. That is how you change your life. Not only your life, also the life of your children, the complete future. It's completely in your control. You determine how the future of you, your wife, your kids will look like. You can do whatever it is. You choose to walk left, to right, on the beach, on the streets, on a garbage dump, whatever you want. You choose where to be. And when you start to make those power moves because you don't want to regret that you didn't do them, that is when life will change slowly into the life that you are wishing, hoping, and dreaming of, guys. 
that was everything for today guys i hope you really enjoyed today's video if you did enjoy the video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and family subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and leave a comment what do you think about the charts what do you think about the news what do you think about the mindset on the end but also what do you think that that new thing is did you find it if you found it you're allowed to comment the link to that website to that group whatever it is that you find down below this video let it know maybe i will even give away a few t-shirts to the ones that find the link and post it down below the video guys i wish you an amazing monday an amazing week let's uh, see you tomorrow again